Back and back YouTube today, we've got our shoulder dominant push day. So we're gonna get strapped in, we're gonna show that to get massive delts and massive triceps. So let's fucking go. Beautiful. Yep, that's perfect set for this. So exercise number one is going to be single arm cable wire raise. It is a, a variation of a wire raise that I have shown before. Now, this one is specifically will allow you to get a little bit more range of motion and allow you to almost get your scalp to move forward a little bit more. So as I get into this movement, I actively try and push my fist forward to try and get as much stretch on my delt as possible. And from that position, then I drive out and around and up. So as you finish this movement off, your arms should finish directly above your head. Uh, now, credit to Gloff. He's the one that's actually introduced me to this movement. And uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. So yeah, game time. Probably work in the rep range of 10 to 15. I'm gonna check what my rep range actually is in a moment. Yeah, she keeps me in check. You've got my notes on your phone as well for the third session. That's it for me. So get it up. <laughs> as you get into your cable, lock on. Push yourself away like this. See this line here? We're set. Brace against this. Arm forward. Think about pushing your fist forward. So see here, slight protraction. And from here, paint the corners across the wall. Yeah. Now, more emphasis on really controlling the end range here. No power, just drag. Make it fucking hurt, basically. Write that down, motherfuckers. Yeah. Fist turned in in the line of the cable. Now try and punch me in fucking face. Yes. Try and get a little bit more protraction. Let that scalp go, let this go. That's it, there, and drive. Beautiful. It's exactly where you're gonna be, there. So push that fist forward towards me. That's it. Yes, there. As much movement around your scalp as possible. That's it, yeah? yeah. So this move in particular, especially someone like Mark that is extremely restricted around his scalp, doing this before your actual press is gonna have huge, huge benefits with your ability to actually get range of motion and getting a lot more freedom of motion around your scalp as well. So it's a great functional movement that allows you to build fucking huge delts. So definitely 10 out of 10 for me, so use it. Yeah, just, just one set on the compounds. Two. Dallas just fucking blown up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Everyone always asking what the mix is. Aaron actually put this on, so anyone commenting, asking what it is, you'll have to ask Aaron. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's pretty decent. It's a good shout, Rav. Get it. Now, exercise number two is going to be our incline Atlantis chest press. Now, the incline Atlantis, it somewhat ties more into upper clavicle because the way the machine is actually designed, it converges in, but it also converges up behind you slightly. So, as you press through, as you come to the top, because it converges up that way as well, it almost puts you in a position where you're driving your upper arm more towards biasing your upper pec fibers that tie into your front delt and the clavicle that ties onto it. So, what you'll notice, guys, on shoulder training, we always mainly focus on lateral movements when it actually comes to direct shoulder training. Now, indirectly, your pressing will target your upper pec and your front delt, regardless of what grading it is. So, take consideration that to build a big, strong side delt, you need lateral raises. Now, as far as pressing goes, most of your presses will tick off the upper portion of your pec and the front delt. Now, today's session, I'm gonna break down as to what degree and what differences between different presses when it comes to your shoulder training as well. Coming back. 
back into your training after some days off. Do not go back in with full volume that you have assigned to your training program. After taking more than two to three days rest, you will need to warm up the engine up before you start driving or warm up the oven before you start cooking. That's my favorite analogy. So today, I am back in after three days rest. And today, I will actually lower my training volume by 40% in total to actually get my body primed and ready to go and really make sure that my central nervous system doesn't get completely smashed from the get-go. It's so important that you ease yourself back in and then start building your training volume back up after three consecutive sessions of lower training volume. It's paramount for longevity of your training block. Uh, write that down and let me know what you think, guys. One single biggest tip I can give you to get the most out of your reps is control and change of direction. If you have the ability to stop in the stretch, completely take the momentum out of each rep, and then drive up, and same again, pause at the top, that in itself will create a world of a difference to the amount of stimulus you can create on the muscle. Again, the goal is not trying to move the weight from A to B. The goal is trying to make every single movement as hard and challenging as possible on the muscle you're trying to target and train. This applies for every single exercise that you do in the gym. Right down. Add that on while I'm talking, yeah? This is what I meant about control change of direction. Now, the way I build up to my whole ice and working set, my working weight, whatever you want to call it, my top set, whatever set, I make sure that every single rep, every single set prior to the set that actually matters is me drilling the best execution I can possibly do on that given exercise. The warm-up sets dictate your working set, and the quality of your warm-up sets will dictate the quality of your working sets that truly matter. As you're coming through, you almost want to drive that ribcage up. Whereas before, you just kind of just, you, you got to a really good weight, but now if you can scale it back and rebuild it to that same weight with a little bit of tidier form, make a world of a difference again. So as you get there, as you're coming through, keep that chest elevated. Obviously, don't extend, don't expand. But as you're driving through, make sure you keep that posture all the way through. Pause, dead stop. Obviously not on the stoppers, but make sure you control that change of direction there, and then you drive through. Come on, up, 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 up. Yes, 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 yes. Drive it through. Control eccentric, control eccentric, control eccentric. Yeah. I was gonna I take it off. On, you'd have been like happy. Do you know when you completely blow your hair out? Yes. So do it stand up. Completely blow your hair out. So it's almost bringing you down. So you lose yeah. position a little bit. I need to elevate Take the air in, but don't forcefully exhale. Yeah. Like just a gentle. If you forcefully do it, like that will force you, it'll force your ribcage to come in. So you'll, you'll just stay a bit stronger keeping that air in and just keeping top ups. Yeah. So get your fucking air in tight, brace hard, right? And then just make sure this fucking stays up. Don't completely blow out. Keep it in. If anything, if you keep that air in as well, like if you're under load, you can't you can't expand that ribcage again. Yeah. So if you let it all out, that expansion's gone. Yeah. You need to keep that expansion in. Do you know what I mean? Like, just give me a little a, a tiny little touch. Up. Oh. My bad. Anyone utilizing a logbook and progressive overload for that matter, there will come a time where you will push your loading parameters up to a certain place where another way of progression is actually resetting some of your numbers, scaling back on the load, and improving your actual range of motion and tempo. So, very often, every 18 to 20 weeks, I will go through my programming, I will go through some of my training clips, I will actually consult with people that I trust, 
when it comes to my training. And I will actually reset some of my loads and some of my lifts in order to get more from them. Now, bodybuilding is not about the load. It's not about lifting weights made to be. It's not just a numbers game. It is all about quality at the forefront of your mind. Trust me, if you take the approach of making lifts harder to get more from them, rather than putting more load on the bar, you will get so much more from them. I can promise you that. Now, ride right down and make some fucking gains, motherfuckers. Okay. <sighs> This angle is absolutely perfect for me to keep my elbow path in a safe place and be able to actually target my upper pec and the front delt. Which, again, when it comes to that training, the lateral work will take care of overall development of your actual delts. Now, front delt gets used across most of your pressing and dip motions. Now, upper pec, your upper pec can never be big enough. Therefore, a high incline press is always going to be my favorite choice of any, any shoulder press slash incline press slash high incline and movement that you want to incorporate as part of your shoulder training. Plates. Yeah, what are we what are you? I'm just gonna three plates. So you were heavier than me last time, so we're going two and a half. I'd probably here by like ten. I'll put this, and then I'll I'll probably go for two and a half. Two and fifty. What did you get with three last time? Fifty. Just a three again. Whatever I get here, don't matter, because I'm gonna yeah, okay. same as on that one. I really fucking want to make sure we get it right. Okay. Any variation of a dip is basically a universal exercise because with you adjusting your body position, you can either target the tricep a little bit more or your lower pecs and the front delt. So the way I use the dip personally is I like to lean forward and I like to get as much range of motion as possible. Now, that will tie in a lot of lower pec front delt and tricep. Now, any compound exercise, most of the time, I will always, always say, try and get the most out of it. And for me, doing that, I get the most range of motion and arguably, it is a compound exercise. So I'm trying to target all these muscles at the same time uh, to get the most out of this movement. Now, for someone like Mark, who specifically needs a lot more tricep, I will actually have him work in a little bit more of upright posture, still, getting full retraction 
and put the pressure in. But keeping it intense, a little bit more on the tricep rather than the pec and front delt. Uh, as opposed to myself, I will actually change the bias more towards leaning forward, getting right over it. So it's almost like a, a lower pec exercise with a little bit of tricep in place as well. So know your bias, guys. And always, always remember, there's many, many ways to skin a cat. Uh, don't just be married to one idea. Tie it down. Cool. Here we go. So, so, so. Now, as you're seeing, the sequence of the session, we're still tying some pec work, as it is a push session, so obviously we're gonna train everything, but today's session is predominantly focused around the shoulders, uh, with the hand climb press set in place, and with the way I actually do the dip. Now, moving on, we've done the pec deck, after the dip, 
Now we move on to the prime lateral raise, which is arguably the best lateral raise machine in the world. Now here, as you'll see, it's pretty simple. Keep our arm sliding through the rib cage. All I think about there is driving the knuckles to the floor and scraping the knuckles across the floor and up. Now, one thing I really make sure people don't do is do this and hold your shoulders in place. For your arm to abduct, your scapula needs to move up and down. So the last thing you want to do is hold your shoulders in place. Your traps have to work to stabilize your shoulder. So you need to let go of your shoulders. Free the shoulder, free the scapula, and just let your arm move and work. And let's face it guys, if you feel a bit of traps, so what? Your traps can never be big enough, and neither can be your delts. how to build a huge tricep. Now, my preference is always working unilaterally for most arm movements. However, the principle applies the same for bilateral work as well. So as you come to the stretch, I always try to think about driving my elbow back slightly and try and get a little bit more flexion on the tricep. So we want to try and create as much range of motion as possible and get as much of a stretch on our tricep as we physically can. So by doing that, we can actually get a little bit more on the stretch and then I don't just think about pressing down. I think about pressing down and back. So we want to fully extend our tricep. If you just press down and forward, you're never able to get the full extension that you need to fully shorten your tricep, so fully contract your tricep. So as a reference point, full stretch as much as you possibly can, and then contract your tricep as hard as you physically can when you go into the shortened range. Now, write it down and let me know how your arm training goes below. Stand up, stand up, push that elbow back, 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 and drive. Push your elbow back. Squeeze here, squeeze here. Keep the tension on and drive. Elbow back, elbow back. Contract and drive. How's that feel now? There we go, there we go, there we go. Yes, yes, yes. Drive. Good. As much distance with the elbow in your hand. That's it, yes. Create as much distance between your elbow and your hand. Create more tension, more tension, more tension, and drive. Yes, I've got you now. Oh, 
How's that? Disgusting. Don't just keep it there. If you just keep it there, you don't get the same range of motion. So it's it's like getting deflection, right? Yeah. So it's the exact same principle. So if the knee is forward, so the other Yeah. Okay. This more knee flexion you get, yeah. more you lengthen your quad. Yeah. yeah? So more elbow flexion you get. Yeah. It's almost keeping it up around there, more driving elbow. Like yes. Shoulder come back yeah, so let's see. As you stay there, drive it back and then back down. So same principle applies. We're trying to train the quads. More knee flexion we get the more our quads actually stretch and lengthen. Same fucking word for the geeks lengthen. The same principle applies on tricep extension. The more you drive the elbow back, the more stretch you get out of your tricep, the more range of motion you actually create. So you can have that one for three. Right down. Not too far here, not too far Got it? Yeah, I can't. Same principle here. I can't have to be literally. No, no, as long as your arms above the head, yeah. it'll challenge the belly. Yeah. Doesn't matter. But once you get the arm above the head, don't just try and keep it forced here. Yeah, Same down. principle. Drive that elbow back to create more tension. Yeah. And more stretch. <laughs> So anyone that's got mobility issues or shoulder issues in general, they can actually be easily addressed with some of your arm training. So what I like to do to finish my push sessions off is actually do one single set of above the head dumbbell tricep extension. And I actually like to pause in the stretch above the head for two to three seconds each rep. Now, that will not only challenge my tricep in that length and range in that stretch, uh, so that specific pause just adds more intent to that portion of the rep, but it will also improve some of my stability in my shoulder whilst I'm keeping my arm above the head as well. So, if you do have shoulder issues, sometimes it's probably down to not being accurate enough with some of your actual arm training or not having good exercise selection when it comes to arm training as well. Your program as a whole should complement all your actual body parts. So that, skip that bit, skip that bit. Your program as a whole should be designed to address all your mobility issues. So there should never be an issue across any of your joints or muscles if you're accurate with your training with your
your exercise execution and your exercise selection is actually on point. As a wrap up, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you have taken something away from the session and you enjoyed it, please like, share, subscribe, support the channel as always. And I will see you again soon. Take care for now.